Well, to discuss more about this fall in China-U.S. investment and China's overall FDI, I'm joined by Thomas Hayes in New York. He's chairman and managing member of Great Hill Capital. Good to have you back. Great to, great to be here with you, Rochelle. So start by walking us through what's been happening first with China's inbound FDI and the sectors getting the most interest from investors. Yeah, well, the good news, as you heard, the August numbers were up 2.6 percent, and that's off a trough. In March, they were negative 10.8 percent. So you're seeing huge improvement in direct investment. That's the good news. The bad news, as you saw, was that the investment between the U.S. and China has really fallen to nine-year lows. It was only $10.9 billion in the first half of 2020. Now, part of that's just due to COVID, but it's also due to uh, bilateral security concerns, different trade tensions. Um, however, the phase one trade deal is still going according to plan. As a matter of fact, the agricultural purchases of China have met the benchmarks for 2020 in spite of COVID, and that's partially due to the flooding and the transportation uh, that they've had to overcome. But uh, the, the third thing I would say, as you heard, uh, was from the capital controls that you saw $46 billion of investment in the United States up till 2016. Then you had the capital controls. And now you're seeing really all kinds of political pressure, Rochelle, on the U.S. side with the TikTok, TikTok bite dance deal, with Huawei, with WeChat, uh, and with the New York Stock Exchange listings requiring Chinese companies that want to list on the New York Stock Exchange to meet the same auditing requirements as other countries and as U.S. countries. And then on the Chinese side, they just launched the unreliable entity list uh, this weekend. They put out some information about that. And it's expected that they may name one U.S. company on that before the end of the year. So, right. so that's really the, the, the back and forth that you're seeing, uh, the summary, so to speak. Now, we have seen that despite the ongoing tensions with the U.S. and, of course, the backdrop of the pandemic, despite that, on Thursday, China opened three new free trade zones and expanded another as part of its continued efforts to open up the economy. How significant is that? And what does this sort of momentum to continue to open up signal to investors? Yeah, I think that's a positive thing. As a matter of fact, the bright spot that you're seeing is agriculture. The uh, is 26 percent of U.S. foreign direct investment in China, followed by entertainment and energy. So there are certainly some good things that are happening, as we highlighted uh, the ex the exports into China with pork demand have been tremendous because of the transportation issues due to the flooding and because of the swine flu last year, losing a million of the herd. So uh, things are definitely moving and there, things are open and business leaders from both sides want things to continue. So they're trying to put pressure on the governments to ease up so business can continue. So it's a push pull that we're seeing here, Rochelle. And speaking of push and pull, we all only has to look at what's been happening with the TikTok deal on top of existing trade standoffs but with the U.S. Now, talk about what growing bilateral tensions means for existing and future investment strategies for companies, especially in tech. Yeah, so I, I think you're going to have a whole issue about information security and intellectual property, and probably a new framework will come out of that so that both sides can benefit. But the key thing here is that both sides are coming out of this pandemic with a strong recovery. And that, that's the most important thing that you saw with the Chinese consumer in the last, uh, last month has really started to come back with the positive half a percent uh, gain in August. You're seeing shopping malls fully reopened. And this is important to the U.S. listener and the Chinese listener because China is about two or three months ahead of the U.S. recovery. So with shopping malls now being reopened, 80 percent of cinemas are, are reopened. Uh, unemployment is below 6 percent. And residential property sales, Rochelle, are the highest since 2017. We're starting to see signs of this also in the United States. So we're kind of following the roadmap. And as we look at the data in China, it's very promising for the U.S. So much so, in 2021, China's GDP is expected to be over 7 percent, and the U.S. is now expected to grow and rebound well over 6 percent, which would be a V-shaped recovery for both economies. Now, we know that China is still boosting domestic consumption, but what countries are China's outbound investments heading to and why? 
Yeah, so uh, you saw the exports go up 9.5% in August. There really is a global pent-up demand, Rochelle. You saw huge demand from Europe. You saw so obviously some demand uh, all over the developed world, other parts of Asia uh, and the United States as well. So as people come out of lockdown the last few months, you're really seeing these economic numbers globally consistently beating expectations. Right. And that's going to persist. The stimulus has been massive. The stimulus has been quick, and it's going to help China, and it's going to help the whole world recover quickly. All right. Thank you, as always. Thomas Hayes there, Chairman and Managing Member of Great Hill Capital.